I mentioned at the beginning of Mass that this has been a, it's almost cliche at this point to say, you know, 2020 has been a difficult year for many of us in particular ways, but for all of us generally. And I think it's worth taking a moment to remember that it wasn't all bad, that there were many things in the midst of darkness, this, this image, this notion of the light that shines in the darkness. I, I've been praying with that a lot lately, this idea of Jesus who comes into the world. Remember, firstly, that the Lord didn't come as though it were like icing on the cake or snow that blankets the ground, but he came from within. He became one of us. So this moment during this Christmas season, it's a beautiful time for us to begin to reflect on that light that shines in the darkness because the darkness has been something that we all have seen and understand, difficulties and uh, the doubts and the, and the ways that we've been affected both as a nation and uh, the world over. You know, we hear this beautiful idea, <clears throat> uh, really maybe one can think about it as an exercise in our gospel passage today, that Mary uh, heard these things and she held them in her heart. To think for one second how important it is for us to look back in the course of our lives, and, and I hear um, a, a special space of privilege is given to the elderly because they have the, the advantage of being able to look back on the course of their life and to see meaning in it, to see how the Lord was coordinating all things in some sense to goodness, to, to see that even the hard left turns with no breaks, right, that sort of characterize our lives so often, somehow or another they have meaning and they bring us in a place that we wouldn't have been before, even now, we can say that we are closer to our salvation than we were before. So I firstly just want to, to suggest that this is a good time for reflection here at the beginning, the new beginning, right? I, I love this idea of the new springtime, a new, a new space that begins to open up for us to, to reflect upon our lives and to see, and, to, and even, even when it's difficult to see, to trust that in fact the Lord knows what he is about. So here we stand with Mary, the mother of God, who's hearing these things about her newborn son as we reflect upon these things in our hearts. And then to consider for one second uh, what, in fact, uh, the affirmation that we receive from St. Paul today, right? That we receive adoption as sons and daughters. That we are, in fact, uh, made into sons and daughters of a God, of a Father who loves us. This, this great gift that he's bestowed upon us. Hard for us to even get our minds around, but as we heard in our first reading today, this, the idea, this is the uh, blessing of Aaron. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Just, just to think for one second, I, I was with Bishop Parks last night, kind of celebrating a mass in Augusta with him. And he talked about something that is, I think, worth reflecting upon. There's something inside us that desires to see the face of God. Right? There's something that aspires to that. To be able to see God face to face, as St. Paul tells us, and to be like him. This gift, this space that opens up inside our hearts it's what uh, one of the great theologians of our time, Henry de Lubac, called the desire of nature, right? It's inside us. It speaks inside us, orients us in some sense to see the face of God. And what do we see when we look upon his countenance? We see, we see something that's shining, as the scripture suggests to us, right? Again, an image of light, almost an image of warmth, that the Lord is gracious, May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. I mean, all these are words of consolation in the midst of difficulty. And, and really, that's been, in the course, I think, we can, we can say in the course of this year, something that we've all been in need of, 
And if you yourself haven't been in need of it, there are many around you that are in need of it. So here we stand looking at this light that shines in the darkness. But very often I, I've thought about this in terms of it being kind of a beacon, you know, sort of, you know, if you can't see the light, then just turn around because you're going in the wrong direction. It's still there, right? It's still there as a kind of point. But it's not just that. It's also a light that begins to shine on things around us. It begins to show us things that we didn't see before. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's, it brings to mind a, an expression that, that uh, C.S. Lewis was fond of repeating, but uh, wrote in one of his books that we believe that the Son of God has risen from the dead in the same way that we believe that the, the sun has risen in the sky. It's not because you and I can see the sun right now, but by its light, we see everything else. You know, if you want to use a little bit less of a, um, a lofty image, it's like putting on a really good pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses for the first time, right? I don't, I, you can't explain it except to say that it just makes your whole, it makes your whole experience uh, clearer. And it gives you something it allows you to begin to see things that you didn't see before. So this is the light that shines in the darkness. And here's the other thing about that light. It marks the dawn, not just of a new day, right? Like the, begin, the, the sunshine that begins to come over, right? The, uh, uh, you know, as the, on the horizon, the sun that, you know, it begins very gently, doesn't it? Right? And little by little, that sunshine begins to consume the whole sky, and then it begins to shine on the earth. And then you be, you're able slowly to be able to see things that you didn't see before. Right? And so this is the nature of that light that shines in the darkness. It shines on us. And in fact, we become, we become bearers of that light even. Right? The Lord has, has chosen to take up his dwelling within us. So this is the gift of what it is to be Christians. So I know that I speak for all of us when I say that we look to this, to this moment, to this, this new beginning, 2021, moving forward in time and space as a people of God and trusting that, in fact, the Lord does indeed know what he's about. But we also look to our mother Mary, who was the bearer of that light that shines in the darkness, the first one to bear witness to it. She had to trust that in the darkness of that night when the angel first came to her and spoke to her, that her yes to the Father, who knows what that, what that was going to mean for her. She knew a little bit about it because Simeon, you remember, you recall, in the temple began to speak about that. He began to say, you know, say about her son that not only was this the Messiah, but that he was going to be a sign of contradictions, was going to be the cause of the rise and fall of many throughout history. But that, in fact, the glory of Israel had shone forth. The chosen people of God was manifest in that moment. That, that all of the covenants and all of the promises of old had come to fulfillment in Jesus Christ, the light that shines in the darkness, the light that grows in strength and, and grew in wisdom and strength, as we even hear in the scripture. But he also said to Mary, and you, a sword will pierce your heart so that, so that the uh, thoughts and inner feelings of the interior lives of many might be revealed. Right, This was kind of a mysterious thing, but she knew that her yes to the Father was going to drag her, as it were. Now, it's probably a wrong word. It was going to involve her in this work of redemption in a very special way. So I suggest to you then that where we stand is a people that have, you know, we've been kind of on a pilgrimage, haven't we? Like uncertain about what tomorrow is going to bring. Uncertain about you know, what's going to happen. And I suggest to you too, though, that what we do is we hold these things in our hearts as we begin to, uh, in a new sense, have this light shining on us, shining on the things around us, shining in, in, uh, uh, in the world, and to be able to see it and appreciate it in a new way. It was always there, to, right? This is one of the great gifts of Revelation and the, and the gift of Jesus that he, that he gives to creation and teaches us what its original purpose was. You think about the gift of baptism, right? I mean, he gave to the water the power to forgive our sins so that we become sons and daughters of God, to revisit that idea for a moment, right? And that, 
We, in so much is this the case that we, that we uh, look, look to God our Father, like not just metaphorically as a father, but as a real father, one who loves us. You know, as a father loves his children, a good father who keeps his promise, who is always faithful, right? We cry out to him, Abba, right? As though he were a member of the family, which indeed he is. Sons of God, so indeed we are. So I uh, just want to say to you, I I see in your faces, you know, I I don't know how late you were up last night. I I was up pretty late myself. I kind of, you know, I was with some friends and, uh, you know, watched the, uh, it was kind of a, kind of a crazy, um, you know, show last night in Times Square, but, you know, watched the ball happen, heard the fireworks in the background, uh, you know, marking the inauguration of this new year. And, um, but I just want to say something to my people for a second as your pastor. I, I want to thank you for your faith, especially uh, those of you that have suffered this year. I just want to thank you for your faith. I see in your eyes, in your hearts, in your lives, the gift of that faith that shines brightly. And it edifies us all. It's what makes us a people of God. It makes us a church. I also want to say to you, those of you perhaps joining us by live stream or those of you present this morning who come here burdened, I want to say to you that there is hope. There is always hope. And that this light that shines in the darkness and the gift of Jesus Christ our Lord, the motherhood of Mary who watches over the whole church, puts us under her mantle, that she, she will be there. The Lord will be there to guide us through in the course of this new year as we look forward to new beginnings, not just making resolutions, but promises to the Lord as we reorient our lives and now recommit our lives to him. So I suggest to you that today, of all days, that you come this morning to receive the Eucharist uh, or perhaps a blessing, depending on uh, your uh, situation And to bring to the Lord all those things that are most important in your life, the deepest desires of your heart, to ask them to bless them, to bless them, to make his face to shine upon them, and to give you and those you love his peace as we make this sacrifice of praise in the gift of the Eucharist and the Last Supper. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen.